lot of people are asking us every single day, how do we compete, how do we prepare for competitions, where to start at, for example? Yeah, so me and Rado, we are now teammates already for three years uh, together. We have been probably the close practice partners also for the three years, and uh, we have been competing everywhere from the start, team leagues, competitive tournaments, and uh, yeah, how did you feel that uh, our practice has uh, helped us towards where we are now? I think it's very important to have somebody that you trust, like, with a teammate, you know that he's not going to like uh, spill your strategies away. Like you know that uh, once you prepare with him, it's confidential. Like he's gonna keep your decks that are working well secret, and you have like a way to test out your decks against a really competitive player without actually putting uh, yourself in danger of exposing the decks. And uh, like there's like so many times where I have like a deck, I'm like, Tice, 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 this deck is sick. Let's play some games and test it out. And like. Uh, if I, play it, if I would play it on ladder and it would actually be sick, then uh, some other players could like steal it and then it would get exposed and then it's useless. Yeah, so one of the biggest issues uh, with competing is still uh, the current ladder. Um, it is not always a good representative for tournaments. In tournaments, there are often banned strategies. You are having a complete different meta. There are also sometimes people that just love to have a little bit more control in tournaments compared to ladder. And um, you need sometimes, if you are playing for uh, big tournaments, you need to practice well uh, with close friends, close teammates. I think it's really important that you have teammates or practice partners that uh, are close to you in the way um, on how good they are. It doesn't, it, it, it's hard for you to improve if you play with a way better player or if you play with a player that maybe hasn't played so much. It can maybe hurt your uh, own success of yeah, developing yourself a little bit. I think that uh, when we first started practicing a lot was when we won ATLC. And after we won ATLC as a team, when we had Life Coach 2 back then, uh, we started practicing even for single tournaments, like even if we would play a tournament together, or if one of us goes and the other doesn't, we still help each other and just like give at least an opinion, because we both play ladder a lot, and because of that we have experience. And even though, as you said earlier, ladder doesn't really matter for tournaments because you have the ban, you can still think how it would be mm -hmm. if you could ban a class, what would make the difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, that actually helps, like the input from, a, from another high-level player that you trust. Yeah, and uh, just imagine a ladder without Priest <laughs> or a ladder without Warlock. Like, that is a complete different world you're in. Um, and often these tournaments are having a banned format. So it's really, really important. Like, you can already come up with great ideas, but at the end of the day, you still need to practice a little bit to see if your ideas are right. Because we often are wrong too. And then the idea goes away after five matches. <laughs> also happens. <laughs> and to also tell people some of the ways we are practicing, but uh, still keeping some of the things secret, yeah. uh, usually we just uh, target matchups. Like we take uh, some matchups that we are not sure about, or some matchups where we want to figure out the best uh, optimal game plan or mulligans, and we just grind them out. And I know, for example, with you, I'm not sure if I'm revealing like a big secret. For example, you, you like to like throw away important cards in the matchup to see if you can win the game without those important cards. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when Fiery Warriors was two mana. Thais was like throwing it away against Agro just to see what is the matchup like without having Fiery Warriors in his starting hand. Yeah. So that's something like next level. You're putting yourself in situations. Mm -hmm. You're creating spots that you might have to deal with in a tournament. Because let's be real, if you play so many rounds, you're not going to always have situations where everything goes perfect. So you're going to have mm -hmm. to improvise and you're going to have to uh, feel the matchup beforehand. Yeah, I felt that in some matchups or some decks we knew really well. And yeah, what I did often and what I think can be a good practice strategy is, is Mulligan your best card away. Mulligan your interface away, Mulligan your fireworks away, Mulligan your wild growth away, and You're see how then your deck is. Because then you get a real, everybody knows how to, when a deck like draws really well, knows how it goes. But how does it go when two decks are not drawing so well? And I think that can also be really interesting uh, for competing. Mulligan your Raza and Anduin <laughs> yeah, oh, in yeah. a mirror match. <laughs> <laughs> that might be hard to for a mirror match. But yeah. You can start anywhere. So, yeah, what do you think was our highlight uh, that we reached together in competing? Um, I think like team tournaments kind of like uh, displayed it. Like I would say ETLC. Yeah, ETLC uh, was probably it was um, one and a half, two years ago, where we were with G2 also together already, and where we won. Uh, yeah, where we won the tournament. That was actually uh, probably but, the highlight. But for me even too. like smaller tournaments, like preliminaries or playoffs, how they're called now, mm -hmm. or when you went to the World Championship, like. We help each other for like these kind of tournaments, and usually it's not really ideal to practice with a player that is also in the tournament. Like the ideal mm -hmm. practice partner is somebody who keeps your secrets, 
is motivated and at the same time doesn't play the tournament because if he plays the tournament, he can also like beat you. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, that's like the ideal situation when we go to a tournament, but it doesn't really matter that much if we both go to a tournament and we practice together, it's still going to be fine. It's yeah, better than like not practicing. We have had tournaments where we faced each other, preparing with each other. We knew everything about our deck, yeah. about each other. It's not cool, but what can you do? Like you need, you need even if you have 16 or 32 players, you need like some people that you feel are, are as good as you to practice with, uh, to stay on that high level. So yeah, sometimes that happens, but overall it, it benefits more than it doesn't. Do you have any special things that you like to do before a tournament? Like any rituals or superstitions? Um, well, I feel sleeping good is important. I like when, for my big tournaments, often the day before I have my rule, the last 24 hours before I go on a big tournament, I don't play Hearthstone. And that sounds maybe strange, but I, I'm so prepared. I did two weeks of the best preparation. If I then queue a ladder game and I'm gonna lose, I feel I'm tilting. I'm like, I'm getting so, like I feel I lose my confidence. I like to, uh, yeah. To get a walk, the first thing I do is on my bed uh, when I'm gonna sleep is throw all like everything away because you always get like five of the. So that's a bit, maybe a thing. Um, yeah, staying and just completely not thinking about Hearthstone is what I try the last 24 hours. And you? For me, it's like a bit different but a bit similar. Like I think I performed the best when I had very little sleep. I try to sleep. But because I try and I want to go mm -hmm. to sleep very early, I end up not being able to fall asleep. Then I get mm -hmm. tilted because I cannot fall asleep. <laughs> then I end up just staying with my eyes closed for like four hours and not being able to get enough sleep before the tournament. But then I just perform well because at the tournament I'm like a little bit tired. Mm -hmm. And because I'm tired, I'm like thinking, man, I'm tired. I need to play better to make up for being tired. And then I play better and make up for being tired. And it's like an entire meta game. I agree, like... guys. What do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> so you have a meta game of like preparing for like the best preparation. <laughs> but uh, uh, to talk about like uh, playing Hearthstone, I also like to not play that much or even at all after I submit my decks. I think it's very important to play, maybe even like a lot of play and like very little sleep before deck submission. And once I submit my decks, then I know that in the moment where the deck submission ends, I have like the best possible lineup in my opinion. After the, the deck submission, if the meta changes, it doesn't influence me with the tournament. I don't really care about that meta game, so I don't want to play into it. I just like don't play at all. So mm -hmm. I play a lot, make the lineup, submit the lineup, then stop playing and then play the tournament and focus on that. And when I say stop playing, I just don't play, but I still like think of mulligans, think of the matchups, mm -hmm. think of how I want to approach the game plan. But it must also be nice, I feel, in our practice, is like we have a little bit of different play style, uh, but I have sometimes with other players, is if we are doing always the same, have the same play style, you lose a little bit creativity. If you have like a lot of players that have also favored other classes, favored other decks, it opens a little bit your mindness too. I remember when we were always with the Warlock and you were the Zoo lover and I'm like the Handlock, Demon Lock lover, and we always were fighting which uh, Warlock we had to play, uh, but uh, yeah. Sometimes we decided together, we often decided like as a team what we do, and then we might even sometimes or often submit the same deck list. Yeah. It's very important, I think. Yeah. What, what about eating? Do you eat something special before like your tournament? Um, I don't eat the last hour before I play. I feel uh, what happens for me with eating is I feel like getting a little tired uh, after you eat. So I eat well, I eat healthy, but the last hour before I try to just uh, not eat anything and then uh, just after the match again. That's pretty solid advice. You? Um, I don't know. Eating, I just want to eat something nice, nutritious, and that doesn't fill me up, as you said. Mm -hmm. The digestion might uh, slow your uh, brain power. But I like to have a big coffee before like every tournament. Yeah. That's, I think, very important mm -hmm. to my performance. Good eating, especially on the days where we, we play like the, the preliminaries, the European regionals. These are long days. We start at 8 or 9 a.m. and it goes on to, well, they say often 8 or 9 p.m., but it can also end at 11 p.m. And they are long days, so you got to stay always. Uh, they are the most difficult for me because I'm still struggling to like have your focus for the whole day. It's, it's super hard. The way I found it to be like very important for me, like very effective actually, is to eat something big at the beginning, like one or two hours before the tournament, and then just not eat all day, like basically fast through it. Because like if I take breaks to like start eating, then I'll get more hungry and I'll think about food while playing. But if I don't eat at all for like a big period of time, then I will not really crave the food during the matches. So for me, it's sometimes effective to not eat during like big tournament days and just eat before and after. Mm. 
If you ever consider yourself, um, I want to participate at a tournament, hey, I see now this role HCT going on here, where can I maybe join? Um, I think it's really good to get some experience at maybe like go once to a tournament. And um, you will feel a lot of different things. You're not playing from home. You're not up behind your PC, um, your comfort zone. No, you're going to another place where you have to play on a completely different setting. Things are different. And uh, if you will play in your first big tournament, or wherever it can be, uh, you might face comp some really different uh, like struggles, feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, I think getting that experience in is really important. I, my first one or two tournaments, man, I, I was like, I almost peed in my pants of like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? So uh, I think getting that experience, um, it, you, you need to get it, and then uh, you start to feel comfortable because it is a completely different experience. Yeah, like getting uh, to the level that we are is not that easy. Hashtag humble brag. Uh, <laughs> like a lot of people ask me, how do you become like a pro player? And I always tell them, you cannot become a pro player overnight. You should start low. Like start with Hearthstone as just like a hobby. Don't try to go mm -hmm. all in on being a professional player. Do something mm -hmm. else and have Hearthstone on the side. And then if you see that you're super successful at Hearthstone, you can invest more time and more and more time into it as uh, you feel. But mm -hmm. don't go all in. Just as you said, mm -hmm. go to some events, play some. I was even say like play some online uh, cups first. Yeah. And after you uh, qualify for some tournaments or something, maybe then go to a DreamHack or to a LAN tournament, experience the LAN, and then maybe dedicate yourself a bit more, play some more ladder, try to see how good you are, try to be objective on how good you are because it's not helping yourself to lie to yourself. I think that is the biggest challenge uh, for the most of the people to bring your experience, bring your gameplay to a LAN. I still think that's a really uh, a, a pretty hard challenge um, that you have to experiment with. Yeah. Well, I think we covered most of the things, right? Yeah. So uh, I hope you enjoyed some uh, more footage or like some back, uh, back uh, stage uh, information from us here. And uh, good luck with what you are, uh, want to try out. And enjoy the tournament. Yeah.